I don't know if you know this, but one of our passions is school districts and helping school districts maximize the value of the dollars that have been trusted to them to build and renovate and provide the very best learning environments. But there have been, you know, a lot of these instances where school districts did exactly that. They didn't really know necessarily to get the expertise on board with a construction project manager, perhaps outside the district's, you know, own staff or to seek legal representation that was really well versed in the construction space. They might depend on sort of the, you know, the in-house counsel, but if they don't have a lot of direct experience like your firm brings to the table, that could be a recipe for disaster. Have you, have you run into any of those types of situations? Absolutely. You know, you know, I often see it that, you know, uh, lots of attorneys think that they know enough about contracts that they can kind of help negotiate. And what they don't realize is there are, there are a number of statutes in Texas in different sections, property code, other civil practice and remedy code that speak to construction projects. I think one of the biggest ones is everyone always assumes that if there's an indemnity provision in there, that it will be, you know, valid. In Texas, there's a number of case law out there that says an indemnity provision has to check some boxes to be valid. I mean, specifically, really? it's going to be in all caps. I mean, <laughs> You know, some, you know, not only in all caps, it needs to be conspicuous. Moreover, it should be bold. I mean, you want all those things because if you don't and then you try to enforce an indemnity provision, a clever attorney is going to say, sorry, this is an unenforceable indemnity provision. And if had the owner known that going in, he could have totally, you know, you know, uh, edited that or he could have changed the cost. He could have he could have reduced the cost if he knows he wasn't going to get indemnity. So there's a lot of those things that I, I think that the typical attorney or someone's not involved in construction doesn't realize these contractors, and I represent a number of really good contractors, they have construction attorneys on retainer or in-house. They don't understand the laws. They are drafting these contracts in such a way to maximize their profit and minimize their risk. And an owner, should, if a good owner, is going to do what he can to, uh, to level the playing field, as I like to say.